What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I am breaking down some user submitted videos. Now I got these from people in my Discord server. Uh, I usually answer via text, give them mechanical advice, whatever, but it's been a couple days and since I'm on vacation, uh, I figured I would take the time to make a video, and break down some of the mechanics and give you guys some tips on what to work on. So if you guys would like to check that out, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now. Okay, so the first thing to say when breaking down mechanics is you have to have a framework uh, of which to break down mechanics and you need to know what is the difference between a style and a principle. Now, the principles are what everybody has to do to throw hard and healthy and effectively, okay? And then there's the style, which is how you go about actually doing the principles. So for instance, everyone that's gonna throw hard needs to have a good lead leg block, but there's different ways to do that. Uh, so Chapman's lead leg might not look like Darvish's lead leg or Clevenger's lead leg or Snell's lead leg, but all of those are very high performing pitchers and they all function very well from a lead leg block standpoint. So differentiating between styles and principles is extremely important. And now I've broken down the delivery in my eyes into eight main uh, categories, so to speak. Then that goes like this, drift, drop, rotate, block, separate, load, spiral, and throw. Okay, so I'm gonna be breaking down these deliveries based on that framework and then showing where they're on and where they're off. Now the other part of it is, whatever the first one is that goes wrong, that's going to affect all the rest down the chain. So when you're trying to high grade your mechanics, when you're trying to improve your mechanics, you always wanna look at the very first thing that happens and fix that first because that's gonna change everything down the line. So if you can get the drift right, that's great. If you can then get the drop right, that's great. If the rotation part is not good, well, you gotta sit there and work on that until you fix it because nothing, working on something past that in the delivery is not going to be effective. You gotta fix the rotate first. If the rotation is fixed and then you don't block well, you gotta fix the block first and then on down the chain. So whenever I recommend, uh, mechanical changes, I look at it in that framework and then I find the very first thing that's wrong and I recommend from there. So let's get into the very first uh, delivery and this is from Hugh. He says he's a 15 year old pitcher from Massachusetts. He was throwing low to mid 70s this past fall and he wants some advice here. So let's check out what he does and it looks like we're in a basement here which is kind of cool. The one thing I see right away is like this, uh, this thing right up here, um, the part of the ceiling. Uh, I don't know how much that's affecting the vision, so I don't know how uh, how much you feel like you can really get after it in this uh, in this video. So it might be breaking down something that's a little bit, um, I guess, less than 100% intent, just because of you know you got to throw. It's indoors and it's cold outside. So props to you for getting your work in. Um, so this is the delivery. Let me play it through once, and it certainly looks a little bit less than full intent. So let's go, the first thing is the drift. Let's see what we get here. And we get a pretty good drift. Now there's a couple things that are uh, a little bit off for me in this drift. And that is the front hip now is very much above uh, the back hip. You can see the, the tilting of the hips here is in this direction. Uh, ideally, you'd want to see, you can get up to top of leg lift and have the hips tilt, but as soon as you start the drop, you want to see those hips level out. The other thing that I'm uh, looking at is the rotation of the hips is coming around this way in the lift. Now what that's going to do is as you start to drop, the, um, the hips are now going to have to start rotating back this way um, or you're going to ride the hips out this way in a closed position. Now if the hips do start rotating back, that you'd think that would be good because uh, you want your hips to rotate, but the problem is they're gonna rotate the torso with them and you're gonna get no separation. Um, the other problem is if you ride the hips out this direction, then you're just delaying back hip rotation. So I'm generally not a big fan of the counter rotation, taking the hips you know, kind of around back this way away from uh, rotation in the lift phase. But we're gonna give this a, an okay on the lift. Let's look at the drop. And you can see here in the drop, we don't get a lot of depth on the back leg here. And the reason for that is you can see the hip line is still in this uh, plane. And so you can't actually get into the back leg. You can't get as far down into the back leg as you would like to 
because the hip line and that's why it's important to get those hips back to an, a level position so you can actually uh, you can actually have the hips function so before looking at the rest of the delivery I'm gonna recommend the change here which is don't rotate the hips around back nearly as much and when you go in in the lift phase uh, and don't get the hips uh, elevated this way in the drop phase so you're gonna lift the leg up and then you're gonna to wanna to come down and sink into the back leg, but you're, you want your hips to be neutral. Um, so you want your hips to be pointing you know, straight towards the plate as opposed to pointing kind of over this way. Uh, and then that's gonna fix a lot of the things down the line. Now what that causes is a delay in hip rotation. So the hips really haven't rotated here. We're now reaching uh, for the plate. The hips try to get rotated, but by the time the foot is down, uh, the hips are still not You'd like to see this hip all the way, you know, not all the way, but more so uh, the hip line kind of in this direction um, at this point. And right now, to me, it's kind of like back here. So the hips are just late in rotating. And now you're going to see that uh, the torso and the hip are going together. Uh, and because the hips are, ro are not rotated, the lead leg block can't be super firm. So it's going to dissipate some energy and there's just really no separation here and you lose a lot of the, uh, the elastic energy. So uh, the two tips that I would have on this is uh, if you are gonna counter rotate your hips, make sure that you don't elevate the, uh, the hip line and make sure you get back to neutral before you start your drop. Ideally what I'd like to see is that high leg lift and then bring the hips back to level as you're sinking into the back leg and that'll put you in a much better position uh, moving forward. Okay. Moving on to the next one here. Let's see what we got. Uh, any feedback would be dope. Thanks all, this is from Eric. All right, let's see what you got, Eric. So looks like we're in a, in a gym, maybe a basement, um, cement walls, doing some plyo drills. And again, doesn't look like it's at full intent. Um, so let's go back to the, uh, here's the drift phase. The drift phase is actually pretty darn good right here. Uh, we see the, the hips and the body are moving forward. So you can see as you're, as you're lifting the leg right here, your hips are moving uh, forward, and that's what we want. They're not moving forward too much. You get like three or four inches of drift, and that's really all you want in that phase. So we're gonna say that the drift phase here is good. Let's check out the drop. Okay, we see here that we kind of have the hip line elevated again, uh, and that's gonna hinder our hip rotation. So I would say to try to bring this front hip down so you get this level uh, pelvis right here, okay? So in the drop phase, we're, we're elevating the front hip, which is delaying our rotation a little bit, and we don't get nearly as deep into the back leg as we potentially could, uh, probably because that hip is elevated. Now, when you elevate the front hip, it's just taking up some of the range of motion in the back hip, and so you can't get nearly as deep, which means that you can't get as much of the energy from gravity. Every inch you sink down into the back leg, uh, you're gaining potential energy from gravity, so you're using your body mass for free. You're letting gravity accelerate you where you're not having to create the energy. It just puts a lot more energy in the system that you can then transfer to the ball. So it's a big thing for velocity. Uh, and right here, we're still a little bit elevated on the hips, so that's gonna affect our rotation. Uh, one other thing that I noticed is these shoes look like these are kind of, um, you know, I wear these a lot uh, as well, kind of these mesh shoes, but for training purposes, you want something uh, if you look at the back foot right here, you want something that's going to give you a little bit better support and not let your foot rotate out like this uh, because that's going to keep you from rotating too. So as you go through the delivery here, um, we can see that the, the hips are trying to rotate. They're not really getting there. Uh, and because the hips are not quite getting there at foot plant, uh, this lead leg has no choice but to drift forward. You can see this shoulder and this hip are now going to rotate at the same time uh, that the ball is being released and the hips have not yet started stopped moving, I should say. Uh, and so that to me is all because we end up in this kind of elevated position right here. The shoes bow the foot backwards and then we're just too far down the mound by the time we get our hips back to level or on this, on this uh, video, flat ground, by the time the hips get back to level, which is right about here, uh, that's when the hips start to rotate, but it's too late at this point. 
okay? And so then we lose that shoulder hip separation. We can't do anything else down the line. So to me on this one, the drift is good. Uh, the drop, try to drop that front hip and get that thing level uh, with, the, with the back hip as early as you can in that drop phase and that'll set you up in a better position. So work on that and, uh, and get back to me with the video and we'll, we'll go from there. Um, okay, so here we have uh, from Big Jimmy, 18-year-old um, right-handed pitcher from Canada, uh, committed to Walter State Juco as a 22. Uh, he's been consistently sitting 86 to 89, touching 90, and he's looking for some help on what he can improve. So uh, let's see. One thing to you guys, uh, if you can film <laughs> horizontally, <laughs> that would be that would be great. It just gives a much larger field of view. Uh, but this is positive. We got some slow motion here, so we can really see what's going on. Most phones these days shoot in 240, so feel free to learn how to do that and uh, get that video into 240 frames so we can see exactly what's going on. So, okay. Let's look at this. We've seen the delivery play all the way through. So let's go into our, uh, the first thing we're looking at is our lift, our drift, lift and drift phase. And we can see that there's a little bit of movement here uh, through these frames, but not a whole lot. So I would say that we can drift forward a little bit more. Now I'm not talking a lot, okay? Let's, let's like two inches here, two or three inches. But mainly what you wanna do is you want to get your center of mass. You can see your center of mass is somewhere right about here and your back foot is here. So you have a very small distance between your center of mass and your back foot. If you can move that center of mass a little bit forward and again a couple inches, then the distance that you're going to have here is going to be much greater. All right? Now what that what that's going to do is if you have your center of mass here and your contact with the ground here, you see you have a diagonal and so you have a little bit of vertical and you have a little bit of horizontal uh, force components. Well, as you sink down, uh, this is gonna sink down, but it's also then gonna be moved forward a little bit because of this, uh, this direction of force right here. So your center of mass is gonna go from here to here to here like this, okay? And every one of these is gonna have a much larger component of forward uh, force. And that's what is gonna actually accelerate you into foot plant where you have all this energy built up and you can stop that with the block, okay? So that's why it's important to get the center of mass slightly in front of the foot. Now, if you get it too far in front of the foot, then you're not gonna be able to drop and you're not gonna be able to use that gravitational force down here to accelerate you forward. So you don't wanna to drift too much in this phase, but you also don't wanna be directly over your back foot, all right? So on the, on the drift phase, Let's get, we can get a little bit more drift forward and see what's gonna happen here is when we go into the drop phase, we're gonna have to create some sort of forward uh, momentum and we're gonna do that by pressing this way with the back foot against the rubber. That's gonna open this knee up and we're gonna end up in this position here. Now you're kind of opening your hips up like this, you're spreading the floor so to speak. Uh, and the problem with that is you're now in this uh, you're not in a good position to be able to rotate this hip because you're having to, uh, you're like spreading everything out, which is delaying the rotation. You're, you're externally rotating your hip here uh, when really it's the internal rotation that's going to help drive the pelvis open. So uh, we, get, we get a pretty good drop here. We want to, but the, this back shin, ideally we'd like to see this shin kind of gaining forward uh, tilt as you're going down the mound, but this is all just because we haven't drifted quite enough uh, forward in the delivery to, to, to use this uh, gravitational energy. The other thing is it, it, it's clear that you've been taught to like screw this back foot in or to, to cue this back leg this way. Uh, I would get away from that. You wanna get away from this vertical shin. You want that shin to drift slowly with your body towards, uh, towards the plate and that'll put you in a better position to rotate. Uh, we do get the hips very level here, which is good. And this is an example that I was saying before, like these hips stay very level. So you see how we're in a position where we can rotate. We're not elevating the front hip here. We're not counter rotating the hips either. So that part is very good. We just haven't moved forward in front of the back foot quite enough. But because the hips are level right here, we can actually rotate them. And you can see through these couple frames here, those hips are trying to rotate. Uh, you can see if you watch this hip 
right here, you can see that actually spinning and turning, okay? Uh, the only issue is that we have such a long way to go from this externally rotated uh, back knee that by the time we get over here to foot plant, uh, we haven't gotten those hips fully around. And you can see this back foot is still parallel here. The hips are trying to get around, but the hips are still kind of like in this plane here when ideally we'd like them kind of more in that plane at this foot strike. So now what that's gonna cause is this uh, hip and this shoulder to rotate at the same time. And you can see that here. Um, let me get this off the screen. You can really see the shoulder and the hip kind of just going together. Uh, and again, we can see the lead leg block is pretty good, uh, but it's just not able to really drive the energy uh, because it's having to accept energy in order for the hips to get to that open position. Now, ideally, we'd like the hips to be landing in about this position right here so that the lead leg block can put force against the front hip. All right, let's draw a diagram from the top. If this is the plate over here, and this is the mound, and these are the hips, uh, when the lead leg blocks, it can put force into this hip, which is going to accelerate this hip forward. And that's where you get your really high uh, hip speed. If we don't land in this position, if we land, let's draw our plate again, if we land in this position with the hips, then when the force is applied to this hip, it just pushes the hips back, or this has to be soft up here to allow the hips to rotate, and then you've lost all the, all the energy. So uh, that would be my recommendation here. Uh, let's get a little bit more drift in the beginning of this delivery so we don't have to try to generate the energy towards the plate by externally rotating this backside and we can use gravity a little bit better and I think if you do that uh, these this hip rotation will actually clean up a little bit and you'll get a little bit more separation between the shoulders and the hips all right moving on let's see here we got uh, Sudsy McGee He's 20 year old, 6'3 right handed pitcher, ranging 84 to 86. I had some tendonitis uh, and sends a couple of different uh, videos to check out. Okay, so here we see we're in this uh, squatted position first. Let's play this through. Okay, and then we get this video. And these are the two we have to work with. Okay, so let's look from the back here. Actually, let's look at the uh, side view first because that's where I usually do my best work. Um, when we're lifting here, we get a little bit of a drift, okay? Uh, not as much as we could, but we do have a little bit. You can see this, uh, this stool back here is a nice uh, gauge, and you can see the hips getting closer to it. Okay, I think we can get a little bit more drift. Our center of mass at top of leg lift is still somewhere in here, and that's almost directly over this back foot. You can also see that with this knee kind of going backwards a little bit. Um, that's kind of like a balance point position. So I want to see a little bit more, maybe three inches more of drift for you in that lift phase. Now, when we go into the drop, we get okay drop, but again, we can't really get a drop because our center of mass isn't out front where we can continue to get that lower as we sink into the back leg, uh, we're over it. So our choice here is either to do like a single leg squat and gain no momentum to the plate, or we have to create some momentum to the plate by kind of using our glute medius on our right side to to push us forward. And we see that here, we don't really get the depth in the back leg that we could. And that's going to, uh, you know, this action of using the glute medius to push this way, which in turn pushes the body this way, delays hip rotation uh, to the point where when we land, um, which is right about there, these hips are still like in this plane again, uh, and we haven't really gotten those hips to turn over. Ideally, we'd like to see the hips more in uh, you know, that would be better if that was landing, uh, and that would be really good if we could land with the hips in this position, okay? Um, so I think, again, here it's this uh, a little bit more drift, a little bit more drop uh, probably is going to get you in a much better position. Now, uh, we do have some arm issues here, um, but I think a lot of those are caused by you're trying to keep the hips closed, you're trying to counter-rotate the torso, and then uh, this arm is, you know, elevated, uh, this arm is a little bit long, we're outside of 90 degrees right there, which is going to put some stress on the shoulder and the elbow uh, and on down the line. 
Now you, you function pretty well here. The hips actually do rotate and the torso rotates well and you get out front, the glove side functions well, block leg is okay, uh, but they're just all out of sequence with each other and they're delayed because of this initial setup here. So I'd like to see a little bit more drift and a little bit better drop and I think you'll sequence a lot better. All right, let's move on here. We got uh, from Warrior, he's 6'5", righty sophomore. Uh, main issues as of now is lack of velocity, he's sitting low to mid 70s, and he's got some info, info in here about why he thinks that is. So let's check out what we see, we'll play this through. Okay. Um, it looks like, just watching it through, it looks very uh, scripted, first off. It, it looks very kind of slow, and like I, I want to move through these different positions. So like trying to script how he's going to move and, and, and whatever. So uh, the first thing that I would say on this is just a little bit more athleticism, um, a little bit more freedom of movement. And you can get this by going and just like playing shortstop and running and you know throwing on the run and uh, just having fun playing the game, playing wall ball, whatever. Uh, pitching should not be scripted. It should be natural human movement. OK, so uh, that's the first thing that I'd say. Let's look at our drift. Um, we lift. And there's almost no drift here. The, the body is, is uh, you know, this is where the front hip is right here. And after this uh, lift, we get a little bit of drift, a little bit, but yeah, there's a, there's a little bit there. I, I could use a little bit more drift there for me. Um, and definitely when we go to sit down, there's not a ton of depth in this back leg uh, when we sit down into it. Now we do see a little bit of this uh, elevated front uh, pelvis right here. And I think that as we, if we drift a little bit more here, we get our center of mass maybe to over here. Um, then when we go to sit down, we'll be able to sit into this back leg a little bit deeper, which will allow this front hip to drop down. Uh, and that'll help us out. It looks like, uh, you know, you can see this motion here. Instead of sitting into that back leg and allowing this hip to rotate and this knee to rotate around, we get this kind of like pushing uh, this way with the hips. You can see that it's just kind of sliding towards the plate. There's not a whole lot of rotation going on in the hips. And so by the time we actually get into foot plant, these hips are kind of in uh, this plane here and they're really not getting open enough where the block can help us. Okay, and I think that's all just because we, we get this set up a little bit wrong. That front hip is a little bit elevated here, uh, and we don't get quite into the depth in the back leg that we could. Uh, and that just causes, you know, this um, lack of hip rotation. So when we do land, torso is open, uh, hip is now rotating with the shoulder, and you can see that, and this just becomes very pushy. Um, lead leg block lands. Uh, here, but it's going to dissipate some energy. There's really no force that it's putting into uh, the front hip in this direction. Everything is just kind of like going to meet it and it's all very pushy from there, but it's because of the uh, setup that we have in the beginning where we don't get that back hip really opening up where we can actually separate the shoulders and the hips. So uh, if you've noticed the theme in all of these uh, hip rotation the, the initial setup and the hip rotation is something that a lot of people struggle with. We haven't even started talking yet about any sort of upper half stuff because no one that we've seen yet has actually gotten the drift, drop, rotate uh, part uh, really nailed yet. So when you see it, uh, it's, it's good to see because you can really tell when someone has it down and we'll see if we get to any more. I haven't even watched these videos yet, so I'm just kind of doing this as I go. Uh, this is from... Um, 6'7", D3 sophomore, left-handed pitcher, topped 89 multiple times in game, and pens, never broken 90. Um, so he's got some things that he's looking to work on here. Uh, is this the right? He said he's a left-handed pitcher, but uh, we get some right-handed video. I don't know, maybe these were, uh, maybe this was turned around. I don't know. Anyway, all right, let's go and let's put this, uh, let's run this through. Okay. So let's go back to our, let's see, drift. 
I think this drift is pretty good. You can see this hip moving forward. Let's use this, uh, this reference point right here. And you can see as the lift is going on, that hip is moving forward. Now we're not completely from the side angle here, so it's hard to really tell. But as he's going into the drop, he's actually getting that, uh, that movement forward. Now one thing, uh, let's see, we do get into the drop, we get some pretty darn good depth on the back leg here. So I'm gonna give a good, uh, a thumbs up here on the drift and the drop, okay? Um, one, the next thing is the rotation. And we're in a pretty good position to rotate here. So we actually get, uh, okay. So we're missing a little bit of that hip rotation. Uh, now you can see, we kind of drop into this right here, and that's about the bottom of our drop. But we can, the, the front hip is slightly elevated here, uh, and that's because this foot is way off the ground, okay? Ideally, as you're riding the slope, like if, if we draw a diagram here and this is your slope, okay, here's your back leg, and here's your hips, and here's your front leg, you'd ideally like to drop into this back leg so it now starts to look like this, and this foot would slide kind of along the mound. And then the back leg would look like this, and these would be your hips, and this would be, uh, you know, sliding this way along the mound. If you are, let's redraw this diagram, if you are, uh, here's your back leg, here's your hips, if this foot stays up and it continues to go this way, as you drop into the back side, you, whoops, your backside now looks like this, your hips now have to look like this to keep that front foot elevated, if that makes sense. So you wanna stay away from you know, the back leg looking like this and the hips being up where that front leg's up here and you wanna to get to the back leg looking like this, the hips are there and this front foot is actually following the slope of the mound down so you can actually rotate the pelvis around, okay? So try to drop for me this, this front hip when you're in this drop phase, which you do pretty well, you're dropping here. I just need to see this front hip drop with the back hip. And one of the ways that you can do that is if you think, let's talk about with this front leg here, he's working uh, in to out. So his, his, his leg is in here, his foot is kind of under his body, okay? So that's in. And then as he's lifting, that leg, that foot swings out and then that foot goes out more, okay? So he's working from under his body to out, so in to out, as opposed to working out to in. Okay, now I work out to in. If you look at me from the front, here's my back leg. My front leg swings out here first, and then my front leg ends up curled like this, and then my front leg ends up in here, and then it comes forward and then it kicks back out, okay? But I work out to in, uh, and the reason for that is when you kick this leg out like this, it's gonna put your body in a position where you have to counterbalance this lever arm. And uh, in order to do that, you kind of have to sink the torso back this direction, okay? You have your center of mass is now out here. All right, but there's nothing really in front of your center of mass. So all of your, you're, you're having to tilt the, sh the torso back this direction uh, and the hips up this direction to try to counterbalance, to stay balanced, to give yourself time to swing this long lever arm out in front. Your hips really can't rotate until you're equally uh, separated, um, until your, your center of mass is like right between uh, your, your feet, so to speak. So if these are your feet, you really can't rotate until you're in this position. So if you end up in back leg, hips, front leg, and the center of mass is here, you really can't rotate yet until this front leg gets over to here and you have this equal split. But the problem with that is when you kick, now let's look at from the, uh, from the front, if this is your back leg and your lead leg is kicked out this direction, swinging that lever arm around okay, is going to be a lot more difficult than if that thing was bent and you could just kick it kind of along the ground out this way. So I think if we can work this from this position, don't change anything here, but if we can bring this foot closer to you and then kick it out. So once you drop down into like this position, if we can kick this foot forward, kind of on a 45 degree angle, it will help drop this hip down, which will put us in a position where we can actually rotate the hips and then we can get a little bit more rotation out of this backside. You're in a really good spot on the backside.
to rotate here, but then you're pushing up and out of it. And that's because this front leg is so high up off the ground so that by the time you land, uh, this hip is elevating and that's going to open the torso early. Right to there. So now you're landing in this position where the torso is already open. The hips are not quite open enough. Uh, the hips need to get to about there at landing. Uh, but by that time, this hip and the, the hip and the shoulder are rotating together. There's very little separation. Uh, this lead leg blocks very well. It wants to. You're really good at that. Uh, the problem is the hips just are not in the right position for that lead leg to block and actually create the separation between the shoulders and the hips. So my recommendation here is drift is good, drop is good, work that front leg. Uh, in, once you're in leg lift, work the front foot towards you and kick it 45 degrees kind of towards the plate here instead of out directly towards third base and think about dropping that front hip down when you're in the drop. Work on that and see if that helps out. So here we have um, any extra set of eyes, currently set 85 to 88, top 91, uh, figuring out what he can do to become more consistent. So, oops, let me just play this through. Okay. So we see here we got a lift and a drift. Looks pretty good, there's a little bit, but uh, this is kind of a fake, a fake drift to me, just because we're leaning back a little bit here on the torso uh, and we're kind of rotating. Let me zoom in here so we can see a little bit better. Uh, you're leaning back here and you're kind of rotating this hip back around, okay? So you're not really gaining any ground. You can see this knee open up uh, in the lift right there. It's opening up. So you're just kind of coiling. You're not really gaining any ground. So now when you go to drop, uh, there's not really a ton this back leg can do other than continue trying to rotate this way to push the body that way. Okay, so then we get into this drop. We actually get good depth on it, so I don't think that's a problem. We do have torso leaning back this way, but it looks like the hips are pretty well, you know, they're not, the hips are definitely not this direction. They may not be perfectly flat like the shirt, but you can see, uh, as we were talking about in the last video, if you look at the foot here, uh, the foot is in, and then when it comes down, it comes down first, and then it's gonna kick kind of this direction right there. Okay, now you see this foot and this foot and the center of the hips, you're in a position where this is very even. So the hips can rotate from here, okay? Uh, this torso position, we're gonna have to clean that up uh, and before we can really rotate and separate. Uh, so I think a little bit more of a drift phase here and a little bit less of a fake kind of rotation this way, rotation with the knee, will put us in a better position. But we get down here, we ride this foot along the mound pretty darn well. Uh, it's just our hips are now not rotating because uh, we are pushing, we are pushing this direction as opposed to spinning the hip and spinning the knee to get the pelvis to rotate. Now you can, and you can really see that here, this foot is completely parallel with the rubber, it's just kind of sliding this direction. The hips have yet to rotate, they're sliding this direction. And then we're already at foot plant right there. And then you can see what happens on this front side, foot plant, the lead leg has to buy some time, it has to buy some time. This hip, this shoulder go together. Boom, boom, boom. The torso might actually be a little bit in front of the hip. And then by the time it's all gone, the hips are finally rotated. Now the block leg wants to straighten out. So I don't think this is a problem with the block. I think the block is just having to buy time because the hips haven't rotated. So get a little bit more drift here. Uh, I like the drop. And then just think about getting this hip. Once you hit the bottom, of your drop, which happens right about here, just continue this knee, roll this down, and roll this hip around. Turn this position into a lunge position, okay? Uh, this is kind of like a squatted position. You wanna just spin the hips and land in what would be like a lunge position, okay? And if we get this hip rotating a little bit earlier, you're gonna see a lot more separation. You're gonna see that velo jump up. So a little bit better on the drift phase. Drop is good. Let's just get that hip rotating a little bit sooner. Zoom back out here. We got uh, Billy Decker, 6'2", 190 pounds, 20 years old, 84 to 86, top 88. He's uh, transitioning from being an infielder. 
Uh, let's see, broken left wrist from diving for a ball. Uh, yeah. Delayed surgery to help out his team in the bullpen. That's tight. All right, let's see what we got here. We got some slow motion video. That's great. No glove because of the uh, broken wrist. Still out here trying to get his work in. Okay. Billy looks like he's in pretty good shape. Let's see. So we get this drift, first thing. Drift is really good here. And this is what a good drift kind of looks like. Just from the, if you look at where the hips are to start, right here, if you play that forward, going into the lift, you can see how that's just starting to drift, okay? The one issue is, is here, we're rotating this hip back around, and you can see that's opening up this backside, this direction. And so now we're in this counter-rotated position. And what's gonna happen here definitely is these hips and these shoulders are now gonna rotate together at the same time, uh, and we're gonna lose shoulder hip separation. But drift is good. I would just get rid of this counter-rotation if possible uh, of the hips. Uh, you, you, don't, you never wanna take your hips away from the position that they're supposed to get to. It just doesn't make any sense to do that. Um, so the drop is pretty darn good here. Uh, again, though, you see how far advanced the hips are relative to the feet, okay? So this is our center of mass. We can't rotate until we get to about this position where the foot's here and our center of mass is in the middle of it. But by that time, this backside has already flown way away from the rubber and we just don't have time to actually rotate. Okay, so I think that this is, uh, let's, let's not rotate the hips here. Let's just drop uh, and try to get this foot, get this hip, if you look at it from the top angle now, okay, the hips are, are starting in this position, then there's counter rotation, so the hips are getting to this position, before we try to get the hips to that position at landing. Just doesn't make any sense. Let's keep the hips here, okay, let's get the foot, instead of coming back this direction, the foot to travel kind of this arc as you're separating from the mound and stay a little bit, keep your center of mass in between your feet, so to speak. Uh, so this comes down here. Hips are now able to rotate right about here, but we just don't have anything to drive them into rotation because we're so far away from the mound. So now the hips don't rotate at all. The foot is down. The only way you can throw here is to dive this direction with the torso and pull off, tilt like uh, off towards first base. And you see this uh, shoulder and hip are all just going at the same time. Lead leg really wants to block, uh, but it can't because the hips haven't gotten rotated yet. And then we just get uh, to this position where we don't really have any forward shoulder rotation uh, and any separation in the shoulders and the hips. So I would say, yeah, let's just get rid of that counter rotation at the beginning and just think as soon as you hit your, your depth in the back leg, rotate the hips, turn that into a lunge position as soon as you can, don't try to delay hip rotation. Okay, moving forward, let's see here. What do we have? Uh, 6'1", 190, 80 to 83, junior in high school. Okay. So, looks kind of scripted early on, just very kind of slow and like, okay, I wanna make sure and move a certain way. Not necessarily bad, but could use a little bit more athleticism there. Uh, drift, pretty good. We got a little drift going on, all right? Not too much counter rotation of the hips which is good. Uh, we, we do lose a little bit of depth in this back leg. We could get a little bit more on the drop. Could get a little bit more on the drift, not a whole lot. I would actually say the drift is pretty good here. Uh, let's just get some more depth uh, in this back leg. So once you hit the top of leg lift right here, you should be thinking go down, okay? You can see him going towards the plate. A little bit more depth would help out. The hips are definitely level. We're in a position here where the feet are uh, about equally spaced with the center of mass. So we can rotate, except we don't, we kind of push, okay? And you can see this, the, the hips right here should be spinning, but they're kind of pushing forward. Uh, and because of that, we just end up in this position where the hips are not rotated. Now the lead leg block lands here, but in order for the hips to get rotated, that block has to kind of give and accept some energy and hip and shoulder are now all going as one piece. 
and then we get the lead leg block at the very end, but the ball's already gone. Uh, so it's just the hip rotation. So drift is fine, drop is fine. Uh, drop needs to be a little bit better, get a little bit more depth in it, but we gotta think about getting, uh, turning this position here into a lunge position, driving this knee around and down and driving this hip around, uh, getting to, you know, getting the hips to like, if you look at it from the top, you know, you want the hips in about that position at landing when this front foot hits you want to get the hips open. Right now, we're landing kind of in like this position and we don't get that, uh, that separation that we need. So a little bit more drop and work on that hip rotation, get that thing to open up earlier. Okay, we got here a uh, six foot right-handed pitcher, 90-92, but last pens were 87. Uh, and he's been posting some videos in the chat. So there's what it looks like. Um, pretty darn good intent wise. So let's zoom in just a little bit here so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so we get a little bit of a little bit of a fake kind of like we got some rocking back going on here, which is elevating the front hip, elevating the shoulders. Um, the drift looks like it could be just a little bit more because uh, it looks kind of like a fake. This is like a pelvic loading type of movement. Uh, it looks like a little bit of a fake drift. So I would say drift that center of mass forward a couple more inches. Uh, and try to avoid this kind of backwards tilt. Uh, but we get into a pretty good drop position right here. And then getting out of it. And there's the throw. Now this is actually a pretty darn good representation of what it should look like. Okay, you can see this foot is working in, drop. Now the foot's gonna work kind of out here, okay? He goes a little bit more to the plate as opposed to out here and around, which is fine, but we're still working in to out. That means the feet are gonna balance out the center of mass the whole way down. He can get into the drop and you can see as soon as we get into the bottom of the drop right here, watch what this knee does and watch what this hip does, okay? This is the bottom of the drop, the very next frame that knee is starting to track towards the plate, which is the start of it rolling down. Okay, and you can see that actually rotates the hips. Uh, we're at landing right somewhere between this frame and this frame, and you can see what the hips are actually doing in those two frames. Okay, so the hips rotate here, uh, shoulder is in a good spot. So. We do okay on the, on the drift. We could clean that up a little bit. The drop is very good. The rotation here is actually very good. The block, let's look at the block. Okay, so we're accepting energy here for one frame and then it stabilizes and then it kind of straightens at the end. So I would say this is a good block. Could be slightly better. Uh, we do see a little bit of drifting, a little bit of accepting of energy here on the front leg, okay? so. Right there, we accept some energy. We accept a little bit more energy. And now it tries to straighten right there, but the ball's already gone. So we could be a little bit better on the lead leg block, kind of nitpicky, uh, but pretty darn good on the, on the lower half. So this is the first time we really get to get to the separation, okay? So we've got the drift, the drop, the rotate, the block. Do we separate? Well. The way you can tell if you separate it or not, let's look from the top angle. If your hips are in this position at landing, here's your front foot, here's your back foot, okay? You want your shoulders at least in this position, okay? If not, slightly closed, and again, here's our plate over here, all right? Slightly closed shoulder line, hips open, you can see the amount of shoulder hip separation here. If we have this diagram where our hips are not open and our shoulders are slightly closed, you can see the limited amount of shoulder hip separation, okay? So this is how you get shoulder hip separation is you open the hips up earlier to get to this position at landing and you delay the upper half from rotating as much as possible so you can get this angle of shoulder hip separation, all right? So I would say that the shoulder hip separation here is actually pretty darn good. Um, the hips finish rotating, so we got drift, drop, rotate, block, separate. Now do we have load? 
uh, and by loading, we're gonna see uh, this arm is loaded back here. So we have horizontal abduction. This glove side is loaded here. So we do have loading of the upper half. Uh, then we're gonna have spiral. So this elbow is going to spiral in. Uh, you can see this hand um, right here kind of flicks to the inside part of the elbow. It goes from this frame here to this frame here, right there to there, okay? And the elbow drives forward. So that's a really good elbow spiral right through there. Perfect. Uh, so we spiral fine. And then we're going to throw. And in the throw phase, we want to continue that torso forward and continue the rotation, which we do. And boom, okay? Glove side, Pulls, starts the torso rotation, firms up, continues to track forward as the torso continues to track forward. All very good. So I would say pretty darn good here. And the thing that I'm looking for is get rid of this fake kind of pelvic loading. Let's just drift. Maintain this position here, but allow your body to drift two or three more inches forward. And then go into your squat and that should help time things up pretty darn well. But overall, that video looks great. And I think we sent another one as a flat ground. And I wanted to include this to show you that uh, flat ground changes things a lot. So we get this big counter rotation of the hip, uh, big lean back here. So very little forward rotation. You can see the, the foot and we're in grass. So that's just opening up right there. The back knee is opening up back this way. All right. And then front hip elevated, not what we want to see, but as soon as the hips get back to level right about here, we can start to rotate, which we do start to rotate, but the foot's already down because we don't have that slope of the mound to bias this extra time. You know, this is flat ground, this is the slope of the mound. We have this extra time that we can buy to get the hips open. So I think that the, the timing, the sequencing and stuff that you're going through Everything here is working, but let's stay out of this position. We're pelvic loading, but we're not really moving forward. You can see our shin here is still vertical, which means we really haven't drifted forward at all. So I would like to see more of a lift and then drift instead of having the center of mass here, get the center of mass to here and then drop, which you do a good job of right there. Uh, but we still have vertical shin right here. Now we're on flat ground. So I would say wear some cleats. Don't throw on flat ground nearly as much because the sequencing is worse here on flat ground. But that initial counter rotation, fake pelvic load, uh, let's kind of eliminate that. Okay, looking for some feedback. This row is 89 with gray plyo. Had a PR last week of 92. 6'4", 230, senior in college. Um, had some injury history. Okay. So we got a little bit of rock and some intent there. I like it. Okay, let's see what we get here. So we get this initial lift and drift. Now look at this drift. Okay, this drift is great. We're not moving too far forward, but you can definitely see the center of mass, which is here. Let me, let me change colors for this one. Let's do uh, blue. Center of mass is about here. And then we're drifting forward. Center of mass is now moved to here. Center of mass is now moved there. And we're gonna go down here. And so you can see this kind of dropping of the center of mass. And this is a really good uh, example of kind of the trajectory that you'll get up for the center of mass when you're utilizing gravity and you do the drift correctly. So we're gonna say that the uh, drift phase in this is very good. We're going to say the drop phase is pretty darn good here. We may be able to get a little bit more depth, but at your size, you don't need a ton of it because you have a lot of mass anyway. So the, a little bit of drop is going to give you a little bit more momentum into foot plant. So we're going to say that this uh, drift and this drop phase is pretty good. Now, the only thing is this. Okay, we see this again. I'd love to see this front hip drop down a little bit so that we're even here in this drift, okay? Think more of kind of like a Randy Johnson style uh, pelvis instead of being elevated. Keep that torso stacked, keep those hips here with the torso here as the whole thing drifts forward, okay? But nitpicky, 
for sure. You can see this, this uh, back knee. If you watch the back knee and the back shin, you can see this starts to drift forward. And this is exactly what we're talking about, staying away from that vertical back shin with the hip and everything rotating this way. You want that uh, back leg to track just like this right here, because that's gonna put you in a position where you can rotate. Now the hips get to level right about here, okay? And you see there's no hip rotation into that point. The hips get to level right about there, and then the hips want to go, which is good. Um, into foot plant right here, you can tell these hips are open. They're not in the perfect position. They're a little bit delayed. Ideally, you'd like to see them, well, you know, they're actually in a pretty darn good position there. These hips are actually kind of like in this position. So the drift, uh, good. The drop, I'd like to see that front hip follow the drop down a little bit. Um, the rotation, I'm going to give this a pass on rotation, okay? Into foot plant right there, we get to a really good spot with the hips. What about the block? Block is pretty darn good. It just stops the energy, boom. We get a little bit of acceptance, but that block leg doesn't, it doesn't leak forward at all, okay? So when we land, boom, there's that position, that position, that, that block leg is super stable. The block leg doesn't have to extend all the way to be super efficient, okay? It just needs to stop and not accept or leak energy. And that is doing this. And you can see the knee is actually starting to push back slightly before release here, uh, which is good. Okay, so I'm gonna give the block a pass. You can always work on the block, but we'll give that a pass. What about our separation? Right here. Now it looks like, if we looked at you from the back, okay, it looks like your spine would be kind of early extension, kind of arched instead of being stacked like this. So it's hard to tell from this angle, but one thing to watch out for because that's going to open this front shoulder. If we look at our, our top angle, like I was saying, the hips get to about this position. Here's our back leg. Let me do a different color. Uh, here's our front leg. Here's our hips. Here's our back leg. That's really good. It looks like our torso is about like this though. And ideally we'd like to see that here. Okay. And that, uh, that early extension of the lumbar spine is going gonna, is gonna to cause that. So I'd like to see the head instead of being, you know, if these are the hips and the spine is like this right now, I'd like to see that spine straighten up if we can, and that's gonna get us a little bit better separation. This is super nitpicky, but trying to, trying to give you the best advice I can. Uh, so the, the, the separation, I think, is a little bit off. Um, let's see, so what about our load? We can see the, uh, the scap is loaded here uh, in a good spot. Uh, we do get a good load right here with the arm, but because the torso opens up a little bit early, we're a little bit out of that at foot plant. So I'd like to see this position on the arm in this position uh, with the hips and the foot. So we're a little bit open early on the torso. So I'm gonna give the recommendation here is to keep that torso closed. That's the first real break in the sequence that I see. Drift, drop, rotate, block, all looks pretty darn good. Um, but let's get this separation. So then we load pretty darn well, just a little bit out of sequence. Um, we're gonna spiral the arm. Arm spiral is very good. Lead with the elbow, uh, and then we're gonna throw. And I think that the torso could rotate a little bit more forward, but you can see here, there's a lot of bending off kind of towards first base because of that early lumbar extension. So don't arch so much into landing. Try to keep a stacked torso and try to keep that front shoulder closed a little bit, and that should clean a lot of this stuff up. And I think, yep, that's it. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, if you guys have any more questions, hit me up in the, Dis the Discord server. Uh, I'll try to answer some of those. And for anyone who's not in the server, if you like, if you would like to get in and you would like me to do some analyses of you, uh, I'm gonna leave the link in the description of this video. I'll comment it down below as well. And it'll be open for six hours after this video posts. So go ahead and join all the other introverts in the server. I look forward to seeing you there. Look forward to hanging out and talking baseball. And for the rest of you, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully you learned something. See ya.